Why are you sending the money from the Nepal to the other countries? That's not the thing. You, that's not the way you think. You cannot control people. Don't spend your money. Don't go to the abroad. Don't see the world. That's not beyond because they have to have the, some different policies. Hello and welcome to NepalTraveler.com. We are back with the next episode of Nepal Travel Trade Show, where we talk tourism, where we talk to people in tourism. And today I'm joined by a tourism entrepreneur, person who has a lot of experience in the tourism industry, Ms. Jiswam Tuladar. Uh, she runs an outbound tour company, Swa Holidays. She has also been at the forefront of tourism. She has been active in NATA, uh, the Nepal Association of Travel Agents. And today I'd like to welcome her to our show. Thank you. Thank you, Terence, for this. Thank you so much for joining us today. So to start with, maybe for our audience, how did you come into tourism and into travels? Anything that you remember uh, you'd like to share? Yeah, I used to say like uh, tourism, how I started like when I was in e school, uh, maybe I was in nine, 10 class, my sister, she used to work in the travel agency. That's a fish tail travel okay. with the Ujjol Dai. And I used to go in her office after the school, after the exam. And, and that time she used to bring some dollars as a commission. And sometimes she used to count the dollars, you know, <laughs> that dollar actually attracted me. So I was, I thought, Okay, I should join with this uh, dollars and I saw some foreigners people as well, white skin. Definitely Nepalese people always attract with the white skin. <laughs> so, yeah, that is the way I told her, I asked her, can you please ask to your boss to make me employ here? So okay. she requested to her boss and then her boss didn't uh, make me join in the same company, but uh, he offered me another company. And then this way I started, but that was very casually just started five months, three months, then take a break. And the, because I was studying, so still studying. Yeah. Yes. but the very first and then officially I started my tourism uh, okay. journey from the Malla travel. Okay. That time I was in, I was doing the graduation. So Malla travel was the biggest and then I learned so many things. So from that, I continue with the some job like from all the travel, Siva travel, then CNK. I just hop and hop off. Within a year, I used to change the company. Sure. And uh, after the five years, uh, it was not my plan, but the yeah, inc accidentally some of uh, I was working in the Jenny travel. That was okay. the biggest company, Joy Devan. So that time, uh, our senior, some of our senior had uh, some problem, some issue with the company. So they suggested us to resign combinedly oh. together. <laughs> so, you know, maybe the 14, 15, we together resigned and we were very new. I was there just for the nine months only. But what happened, uh, we knew where the kick out from the company after the resign <laughs> because we were very new. <laughs> but the world one, they kept again they, were, they uh, yeah. came back but you were removed. <laughs> yeah because they were experienced uh, so that way we very much um, you know hot also and then we five, three were there so we thought like oh this we should take a, as an ego so we should start something new and so then we started lucky travel as a partnership maybe five six people together, together. so after one and a half year work there so as a partnership I didn't like because so many output and so many thoughts I cannot implement there so I thought I have to start my one company then 2006 I established my one company so from that I'm continued till now so that is Swa holidays. holidays yeah so about Swa holidays what is unique about it because it's not an inbound it's outbound yeah. company Actually, I started my company as a ticketing company. 
So I have a two company, so I choose and travel that looks for the ticketing, international right. ticketing and then inbound as well. But the later, and as you know, I told you, I'm very much attractive with the traveling and white skin. So I started to travel with the, buying the packages with the sometime with the Marco Polo, sometime the president travel. Okay. So I travel Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, yeah, this destination. From Lucky Travel, I started from the Thailand, so I started. So later on, I, what I realized that we, I should start, that time there was only one company, uh, Lalit Mandap, which okay. was very right. first outbound company. He is the boss, he is the like our teacher, in the guru, uh, <laughs> in the, the outbound pioneer, industry. Pioneer for Nepal's yeah, pioneer outbound. for the outbound. They, they are not now, they are, uh, I think they closed the company. But I know them only because they were, they were the only used to uh, sell the outbound packages. Oh, so I thought I should, and Marco Polo was also there, President was also there, and the Jenith experience definitely, mm -hmm. Mika Di, and then we bought some packages from the, I travel myself. So later on I realized that people are keen to travel because that time the packages was very cheap. Like I think Thailand was 25,000, something like that, very cheap. And so I started FITs, so this way, and the people are very keen to uh, travel abroad. So uh, it wasn't very hard initially, very hard to convince, uh, because I was also learning, but the later on uh, uh, corporate companies, they started to send the people as an incentive packages, incentive group. So I started to catch there. So, it's now I do more corporate companies, colleges, schools, and the FITs as well. So this way I started. So when you look at outbound packages, tours, that's kind of a recent phenomenon because I think Nepalis now with the lifestyle getting better, yeah, yeah, with yeah. the incomes, right. uh, the spending is higher. Uh, where do you see the future for outbound tourism for Nepalis? Actually, Nepalis, uh, you know, the, this morning only I saw one quote uh, or one status from my friend. I was saying that traveling is this much important like we uh, like eating and the having uh, so many regular uh, work. Traveling also very important, essential because when, when you travel, then only you learn so many new things like you learn how to be confident, how to uh, you will see a new things, new people, cultures, people. cultures and then you'll have a more confident I guess and then uh, you'll be more a learner as a and then you will learn so many things from the abroad also because initially when I started to travel that time uh, what I felt like so many things we don't have in our country let's see let's we have to start maybe I, I was thinking like that but at the same time I used to take some of group so they bring so many things in Nepal as you see so many uh, brand here KK Mart and I think um, uh, some so many coffee company yep. and then yeah the hotels and then different different kind of new concept comes from the abroad so this is very helpful and then this is essential also for the uh, not only for the Nepalese, for the, all the humans. They have to keep on traveling and they have to bring so many new ideas from the other countries and new uh, people. And then exchanging the business, like if you go to the other country, then only they will come to know Nepalese also travel sure. and there is a Nepal also because we will talk to the people when we travel, when we walk, when we go shopping, wherever, where are you from? They will definitely ask, we are from Nepal. So which country? So many Countries are there, they don't know Nepal. Nepal. Yeah. But these days, so many people know that because people are traveling, traveling a lot. So that's why. And then we will say, we are from the highest Mount Everest company. We are from the Buddha was born company, uh, sorry, ne Nepal. country. Yeah. So this way we, uh, You're yeah. Putting Nepal yeah, out yeah representing, representing the Nepal also. And then they, they also come to them. Then that time, definitely not even me only. I'm a tourism business. So I have to tell that you should come to the Nepal. We have this, we have that. And we, we used to go for the sales mission as well. But the 
simple normal people who ever do the other business they also tell you you should come we have this the this that yeah. then you know and the people will be interested and they will come to the nepal so this is the exchanging the tourism business also very important very to important. go to the abroad also for airlines i think yeah, it's better airlines. so they can fill up yeah, the seats exactly. both ways yeah, they yeah want to fly exactly to exactly so all the uh, big airlines also could come to here when you talk about outbound destinations which are the popular destinations or which are the possible destinations for nepalese to travel to at the moment when you look uh, at it actually it's all about the firstly nepalese people look for the cost definitely so effective cost uh, very popular destination in nepal market is thailand yes. because that's uh, nearest destination also 3 price. hours 2 and 1/2 hours flying hours and the direct flight also there three flights are there now and the uh, another is now very popular is dubai dubai is very popular reason is uh, getting the visa is very, very easy sweet. 24 hours within a 24 hours you can get the visa and another is the every year dubai has a different different uh, attraction and another the dubai is the most biggest con- country where you can learn so many things about the business architect and uh, so many things you will learn to the dubai because you don't yeah shopping as well shopping. yeah you don't need to go to europe usa which is the very far expensive but you will get the everything in the dubai as a europe country because so many europe and there Brands so many yeah everything. african so the indian market are there so indian are very um, popular in the yeah. whole world <laughs> So and another is uh, Dubai, Malaysia, Singapore as well but these days Malaysia Singapore is lesser because of the after the covid the airfare is very That's high fine. yeah because of airfare very high and the new destination has introduced these after the covid is Maldives and then um, Sri Lanka as well because okay. Sri Lanka we didn't have the direct flight after the now COVID, we have, now a, direct we have a three and a half hours direct flight wherever the direct flight there So all the destination are very popular but the mostly people are travel to Thailand, Dubai, Malaysia, Singapore, Maldives, Sri Lanka. And then yeah Baku also. Oh yes. Baku is a kind of like Europe destination. You will feel like you are in Europe and then very cheap. Very affordable for. Yeah, everybody. very affordable. Even the Baku and the Thailand you compare the Baku, Baku is similar. Is- It's a 7 hours flight 7 8 hours flight you have to be connected and transit still it's a similar price because Baku is uh, promoting a lot in uh, tourism they have very cheapest cost okay. and when you look at uh, say countries like South Korea or Japan mm-hmm. are Nepalese interested to go but there are other logistical problems there no 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 it's a problem about cost also and the problem about the visa also in the south korea there is a very high rejection for the visa and even the, for the japan also which but, uh, also yeah, for america uh, yeah and the uh, but compared to the if i say the south and south korea and america in my experience in my opinion america is more easier to get the visa yeah because you don't need anything for the documentation you just go and get whatever the region online. you have to yeah and online, online and the for tour it's more easy because the all thing will prepare by travel agency you don't need anything if you are travel if you are traveling to america you need just passport valid passport only 6 months valid passport only rest will think uh, prepared by travel agency okay. but if you go to the south korea so many things documentation Very has difficult. to prepare and the japan also has to prepare europe also has to prepare so compared to those countries south korea and japan is not so much popular some of the corporate they tried for the south korea and then so much people are rejected okay. so this is the, the rejection is higher uh, yeah country. rejection is high this is the reason also and the cost effective also very high compared and to the europe you've been also taking the the groups and going yeah, yeah. As, as a woman as a, yeah to leader some of the problems probably that you have faced so many problems would you like to share some of them yeah, because yeah. for nepalese i mean traveling abroad is re- fe- quite a new phenomenon So I mean, there could be some issues. There could be some logistic things. Yeah. Any yeah. memorable things that you like to share? So much, so many memorable things. Uh, first, I would like to share one memorable, very. Um, it's a lesson for me also. Uh, it was in 2017. I took one Asian Life Insurance Group to the Europe. Uh, that time we applied more than the 50 people, but we got I think 25, 30 visa only. Uh, in the among that group, one. Uh, one guest was there who who is uh, following i don't know what is the um, some uh, 
religion, I don't know. He doesn't eat anything, anything cooked by other oh. people. He used to carry everything from Nepal for the 14 days we were there. Okay. So he used to eat those things and the, even he uh, never eat the fruit as well, uh, caught by other people. Oh. And then he doesn't drink that uh, water in the wine glass. And you know the culture of the Europe, they serve yeah, yeah. water in the wine glass. They serve okay. a juice in the uh, beer glass, wine glass. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and that was a very tough moment for me to handle his food. And I used to focus what he will eat. He, if he will not eat if with this much long days, 14 days, he will get the six. Yeah. That was my big... So he carried his own food yeah, from here. Yeah, but still I used to worry about because if he get the sick, very then expensive and very medical. problem and I have to be with him, medical okay. issues. We had a travel insurance, the medical insurance also, but the but whole, whole group will be disturbed. So I was so much conscious, but the luckily he didn't get anything. Maybe he was used to. So that was my lesson also. And then after that, I used to ask all the guests. What is your special? Yeah, things? yeah. <laughs> I, I was not aware about that. What is your food? What you have allergy? And then from that, I used to prepare so many things earlier. So it was easy for me because after that also, I had some people who used to have a particular food from Nepal, particular this. And then what they used to do, like uh, one group I took in the Australia. Australia is very strict I'm for the important. food, yes. yeah, these things. And I told them you cannot carry anything like uh, green parts, fruits, fruits, whatever you want. Yeah, nothing. it's it's uh, food is very restricted. Still, they didn't listen to me. Okay. And they took some, um, I think, uh, fruits. What is the fruits name? I don't know. Okay. So that was confiscated, or they were fined. They were fined a big amount. Wow. Thankfully, only fine. They didn't offload it from the, de deported from, from the Australia. So these kind of uh, challenges are there. And another challenge is sometime, uh, whenever I took the, some people, they used to have a, like um, uh, disease kind of blood pressure, okay. some kind of sugar, this kind of. They, so you, they never tell me, we used to ask, do you have any kind of this kind of disease? Health yeah, health condition, okay. do you have? And what is the problem here in the Nepalese, I don't say everyone, Nepali agency who, who take up abroad, they they never ask to the they guest and they, these, they okay. don't check. And then I used to check and people used to get the irritated. Why are you asking this everything? Why you need this everything? You know, it's convincing is very difficult. So last time I, I'm taking up every year British college uh, student every year. And the last second uh, year, last year, 2023, what happened when we were walking and then one of the students, he, he got the, some uh, disease, he got some problem. So he got the fainted. They felt the, oh. oh my God. And Dubai is very medical. And yeah, we always do the travel insurance. And the, another problem is people don't want to do travel insurance, medical insurance before travel. I always tell them it's a compulsion. It's, it's mandatory, I think. It's in most a mandatory, but it's very hard for me because other traveling they don't do. When I do the medical insurance, my cost goes high and they don't understand. Coming to the other travel agencies, are there too many outbound operators right now in Nepal? Because in Facebook, you see all kinds of things, Bali for this much, Thailand for this much. So is there yeah, an yeah. overplay? I mean, yeah. in Nepal, everything is usually oversupplied. So is this also an oversupplied area? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, so nowadays, so many inbound con company also uh, converted to the outbound company and then ticketing company also uh, doing the outbound because before COVID also, uh, actually it's from after the earthquake 2012, yes. after the earthquake, all the inbound was down. Exactly. It was zero like hotels, By everything year, yes. for the ma uh, one year at least. So that time people were looking for the new Moving business, say so, yeah, movement. So the we were the outbound company that time. Everyone was uh, uh, closing the business. Everyone was shut down office and staying in the home. But I was, and I was in some of the outbound company also. Where are you? In that earthquake also, every day there is, <laughs> you know the 
shaking the hall but i had to go to the office because i had so much guests to travel okay. in the abroad because that time people were so panic and they want to go abroad they were coming a lot to us issue the visa i want to go with this they want because at least for the, who can afford that time they had money also who can afford and they they, they felt like a life is not thing you have to experience and you have to see the world that is the biggest that thing is. if you if you were lost your life in this covid you couldn't see so that concept people got from the nepal so from that time uh, so many companies started to doing the outbound and after this covid again the so many company started, started to do the outbound and the new companies so lots of competition there and then yeah it's a unhealthy competition that's very tough is there some kind of association or uh a group that says okay no this is the minimum standard we must maintain or is it just free anyone does what they feel like actually nepal association tour and travel also has to do for that outbound and when i was in the nepal tour and travel i used to talk about it because we have so many challenges and problem with the government policy with the rashtra bank policy and with so many things like sending the money remit the money to the, uh, to the uh, abroad countries. and then another is uh, another problem was there initially there was a $2500 people can uh, get Use. the exchange as a uh, by guest when they as travel yeah currency. yeah and the later on they 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 bring in the $1500 and within that $1500 you have to send the remit amount to the other company by travel agency also and within that $1500 the guest also need to take that and that is not enough because exactly. the europe if you uh, buy the europe $2500 we have to send the money to their, uh, to their company, uh, yeah so. our company our supplier and that is totally not i was i went to the uh, that Rashtra time bank. i went to the rashtra bank i appealed them and they don't understand they just understand why are you sending the money from the nepal to the other countries that's not the thing you that's not the way you think you cannot control people don't spend your money don't go to the abroad don't see the world that's not beyond because they have to have the some different policies Exactly. Like, and if we want people to come from abroad, then we should also yeah, be able to work. Yeah, we should not uh, stop. Company. Yeah, it's a tourism exchange. That's a very narrow-minded, I think. And in that way, they are opening the different um, illegal way. Exactly. Yeah, so people, people are travel, still definitely. going. They are yeah. still traveling. We were also and doing we, it yeah. uh, there is a one association. So Nepal Tour and Travel also they have to take, and that they they uh, they fight for the some uh, issues like this fifteen hundred dollar. You have to do the twenty five hundred. So what is the limit now? Has that changed? Now, now it's a twenty five hundred dollar. But still within the twenty five hundred. But uh, before that um, uh, fifteen hundred dollar, it used to be like we don't need any passport, and within the fifteen hundred dollar, it's not our. Mm -hmm. We can send any money with the uh, uh, with the bill amount with the all the documents, and the fifteen hundred dollar purely. You know, uh, can take by guest but now $2500 and the main problem is I have to get the passport of the guest and which is totally illegal you cannot take you can else's. keep um, you cannot uh, keep passport and citizenship of other people Persons, yes. that's not legal actually you cannot keep but we have to do that and the people get the guest will get so angry why you pay saying the paying money from our um, passport why i am not because people need the 2500 dollar exactly. if they go to the europe they have they to absorb and then sometimes it could happen anything they should have a backup they exactly. they don't understand but initially it was very hard to convince them it's like this is the uh, country rules and regulation it's not our rules and regulation it's ruled by rashtra nepal rashtra bank it's not, not us, us exactly. but they don't understand but slowly gradually now they start to understand and these days so many companies from abroad they have a company in nepal also they have a nepali account and i don't know definitely they will do they the hundi that's an illegal way they have opened i have oh. to say that but uh, this is the way the government so, is so thinking. So there's a lot of hindrances and the government is not really yeah, they very don't much in understand. favor of outbound. They exactly. only want inbound. Yeah, yeah. And they straightly, one, one, one time I went to the Rasta Bank and met to the director. I don't remember the name. One lady was there. Why, why are you sending the people to the outbound? Why are you sending our money oh, to the outside? Out. Oh my God. That's, that's not a question she should ask. How can we control people? You don't travel, you don't go, you don't work, you don't do the business. 
it's an exchange if we go they will also come exactly yeah people will travel in the different different um, purpose it's not only for the tourist uh, uh, tour only to yeah so they don't understand also, i uh, try to convince them also jisunji has they been uh, because now nepalis are traveling so a lot of people are actually getting to see nepalis of course the foreigners who come to nepal they have studied about nepal they've read they know what they want to do but we going into other countries as groups of nepalis what is the impression that people have of nepalis when they see nepalis tourist there oh yeah some of the country even in the dubai also people get so much surprise last time uh, last time only i was in one restaurant uh, which was uh, we had a lunch and then that was uh, operated by pakistani people maybe and then uh, they saw nepalese people with the high class high end the, the british college student mm -hmm. they are all are very from the high end high yeah the class people class student so they were very surprised they they was they was telling uh, they was telling uh, i never i have i have seen so many nepalese here who used to do the labor work and they are in the for the work and you, if you go to the dubai bar dubai area you will oh, see a dubai. lots of labor yeah, people workers. with the you know that they are working there so they were not expect in nepali also can Thanks. travel to the abroad <laughs> they were strictly was saying i never seen like kind of aap logon ka khane ka tarika bahut hi for alag hai they were speaking the hindi so the same thing in malaysia when yeah. i went to malaysia and singapore yeah. they were like nepalis as tourists they, they, they are little shocked yeah because they see mostly as people who are there to work in work only yeah malaysia also the so many labor people oh. they go and then they they get the surprise and in europe also oh from nepal you also travel and when i was in canada with the group and then uh, our driver was nepali so he was like oh my god nepalese people are able to Traveling. travel to the canada and us <laughs> you know in the us a one restaurant <laughs> we were having the lunch in the nepali restaurant and my guest that that was very fun my guest was asking how much uh, investment for this restaurant he was asking to the owner and he he was in it's not uh, it's beyond your imagine imagination so my guest gets so angry and he was <laughs> replying we are not like you you know you you work here but we are traveling here so they got surprised oh, okay you got in this packages and you pay 6 lakhs plus amount to they were surprised there. so it's a uh, good to hear yeah, so this way, kind of yeah when nepalese travel abroad i mean people also see nepal they see a positive side of nepal that we have yeah. people who can afford we have people who can travel people who are ready to to see the world not just right. come as workers right right they are also capable and they are also uh, nepali also they have a executive uh, yeah people and they also love to travel even they are uh, earning a less amount they yeah. uh, save for the travel now exactly. especially young generation they save True. and they so many young generation i saw they travel alone and they travel solo they travel backpackers and the other countries when i back to the thailand one day i met the three uh, guy and they were saying they were there in the thailand in laos for a month they hire a car and they and travel they all the thailand each own. cities and i was so surprised wow so keen people are there so this is good to hear so as a last question what do you think we should be doing to get a healthy outbound industry get things right in that mm. yeah i used to talk with my companion actually my colleagues and my companion my juniors also whenever when you sell the packages do not sell for the profit only you have to first think about the your guest safety which is the which come with right. the healthy competition you should think the insurance definitely and then what the health condition they have and what is their uh, food requirement and then another is you it's not like you take them and that um, so the places and just get back you should make them aware awareness is very important you because the uh, incentive group whenever i take they are very much un, they are not aware about the so many things they are not disciplined yes 
it's very hard to control them. They think like they are with the travel company, with the hotel. They think like they buy the hotel, they buy the bus, everything and the travel company. It's not like that. You have to be in the discipline. So whenever they go to the abroad country, they talk so much things in Nepal. But when they land in the abroad country, they will they be in it. the line. <laughs> they forget and they are in so discipline and they learn and they, when they back, they say, okay we have to do the same thing in our country also so we have to follow this so this thing they are bringing from the abroad you know have you ever had a case where somebody because most embassies are afraid to give visas one of the reasons we talked earlier is because they say that nepalese will disappear they will run away has any travel uh, outbound travel company faced this problem yeah, I faced myself. <laughs> oh, okay. So there are still some cases like that. So that also needs screening before we take yeah, them and go. Yeah, yeah. That is very difficult actually. In Canada also, the two of person, they didn't back. I requested them a lot. Like you have a six years visa, you have a four years visa. Why, would do Why are you staying now? You can think about this and you can come later, but they didn't. Uh, they And then in Europe also. Uh, when we were going to the um, tour and the one couple, they were very good business in the Nepal. I used to travel with them on a other country also. So when we were back, they were not there. They were vanished. They, yeah. So these are the things that also lead to a problem in yeah, the host exactly, countries. Then exactly. they don't want to give this visas to Nepal. This is the biggest Nepalese. problem to get the visa for the Nepal. Because they've had bad experience yeah, also. Yeah. Uh, right now, um, the Australia is doing very much strict for the visa because of these. Because of certain that, incidents yeah, that have happened. Even the high end people. So maybe our country financial crisis also. High end okay. people also. They are not. Uh, not doing yeah. That. Is there anything else that you want to talk about on outbound? Yeah, actually not only outbound, it's a travel. I want to tell the people like traveling is very essential, as I said. So you have to travel whether uh, it's not necessary. You have to travel luxurious. It's not necessary. You have to got you, you should have a big money for the travel. Whatever you have a capacity, you can start from that. Even in the inbound, so many destinations we have. Yeah. You you should support to the Local those people economy. and you should learn so many things. So people, when you born in the world, you have to see the world. You should try that. It's not, it's a, you know, the one girl from Europe, she was traveling from last six months. And lastly, her destination was Nepal. She was here for the month and she stayed in my house for the five days also. I asked her, her budget, her budget was uh, for the six months, almost the maximum $2,200 only. That was very surprising for me. And I asked how... How do you manage to... Uh, no, yeah, but the thing was, there is a one um, apps is there, which uh, if you get the membership and if you get the reference, you get the free of cost, the accommodation, free of cost, so many things. Okay. She stayed in the Nepal, so all the free of cost accommodation. And that is the exchanging. And when the Nepalese people go to the... They also can Yeah, that. that country, she has to sponsor. Okay. So this way... So many people are traveling, so you should have an interest, then you, you will get the so many way to get the travel. So travel the people and the see the world. This is the life experience. Thank you, you so much, Jiswanji, for thank you spending so much. time with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jairans.